To prepare for the definition of cross product, we now need to briefly review the definition of determinants in two and three dimensions. So let's start with the two dimensional case. So suppose we have a two by two matrix. In other words, I have a two by two square of numbers, A1, A2, B1, and B2. So these are four real numbers. And the determinant of this matrix, sometimes denoted just by putting the four numbers in a square with vertical bars on either side is defined to be a1 times b2 minus a2 times b1. And a way to remember this is you take the product of the two numbers on this diagonal, a1 times b2, and then you subtract the product of the two numbers on the other diagonal. Now, the geometric meaning of the determinant is as follows. So let's consider the vectors a equals a1, a2, and b equals b1, b2. Out of these vectors, we can make a parallelogram. So here I have two copies of the vector a and two copies of the vector b. And the meaning of the determinant is that the determinant of a1, a2, b1, b2 is plus or minus the area of the parallelogram. And what's the deal with the sign here? So it's plus when a points to the right of b. In other words, if you put the tails of the two vectors at the same point, then if you stand on that point um, and sort of look forward, you see A to your right and B to your left. Um, this is not sort of a very rigorous way of saying it, but I think you get the idea. Um, and it's minus when A points to the left of B. So that would look like this. Okay, um, So you can check this. You can just draw the parallelogram and calculate its area. This is a little exercise in geometry. All right, now let's talk about three-dimensional determinants. So if I have a 3 by 3 matrix, A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3, the determinant of this, which I can denote just by putting vertical bars around the 3 by 3 matrix, is a sum of six terms. So the first term is A1, B2, C3. The next one is A2, B3, C1. And the next one is A3, B1, C2. And then there are three negative terms. So it's minus a1, b3, c2, minus a2, b1, c3, minus a3, b2, c1. Now, I don't expect you to memorize this expression. There's a much easier way to memorize or remember what this determinant is. So the first term is the product of the three numbers in this diagonal. So a1 times b2 times c3. The next term is another diagonal where I start at a2, go diagonally to B3, and then wrap around to C1. The third positive term, I start at A3, I wrap around to B1, and then go to C2. Now the negative terms are diagonals going the other way. So the first one, I start at A1, and I wrap around to B3, C2. The next one, I start at A2, go down to B1, and wrap around to C3. And the last one, I start at A3, go down to B2, and C1, like that. By the way, there are 4x4 four four and higher determinants, and they're given by a more complicated formula. So this trick with the diagonals only works for 2x2 two two and 3x3 three three determinants, but that's all we're going to need in this course. All right, now what's the geometric interpretation?
So we can make three vectors, a equals a1, a2, a3, b equals b1, b2, b3, and c equals c1, c2, c3. And out of these, we can make a three-dimensional analog of a parallelogram. So I start by drawing the three vectors with their tails all at the same point. I can then make parallelograms out of them. So here's a copy of A. Here's a copy of C. Here's another copy of C. Here's a copy of B. Here's a copy of A another copy of B, another copy of B, another copy of C, and another copy of A. So we make something which looks like a sort of lopsided or, or lopsided rectangle, rectangular box. Looks like a rectangular box which is falling down. Um, the official term for this shape, it's called a parallelopiped. Okay, and then the meaning of the determinant is that this determinant is plus or minus the volume of the parallelopiped. And when is it plus and when is it minus? So it's plus when A, B, and C satisfy the right-hand rule. Now the right-hand rule means if you take your right hand and you stretch the four fingers, not your thumb, of your right hand so that they're pointing in the direction of A, and then you curl your fingers towards B, then your thumb will be pointing up towards C. This only works for your right hand. This is great for people who like to write with their left hand because then you can write with your left hand while using your right hand to check the right hand rule. Okay, So this um, example I've drawn, that satisfies the right hand rule. And it's minus otherwise. So an example where they don't satisfy the right hand rule, it would be if A goes like this and B goes like this and then C goes down like that. By the way, when I draw the x, y, and z axes, I always draw them like this. And if you imagine vectors pointing in these directions, so let's give them names. So here's a vector 1, 0, 0. I'm going to call this i. And here's a vector, a unit vector in the y direction. We'll call this j. So this is 0, 1, 0. And here is unit vector in the z direction, let's call that k, and denote it by 0, 0, 1. Then i, j, and k satisfy the right hand rule. And that's consistent with the fact that if we look at the determinant 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, then this determinant is 1. Why? Well, so if there's a positive term, which is the product of these three ones, and any of the other five diagonals is going to have a 0 somewhere, and it's going to be 0. Okay, so we always draw the axes this way. If you label them differently so that they didn't satisfy the right-hand rule, that would lead to enormous confusion.